Netflix's Korean content is failing right now. Is this the end of Netflix? Hey, listen, if Netflix goes down, don't blame it on us. We brought you guys like billion dollars off Squid Game. That's true. And plus, it is just a function of global capitalism. That was also the theme of Parasite. Also true. Uh, we got to talk about this right now. There is a new article that came out that said Netflix is experiencing a decline in users as its Korean originals struggle to replicate the phenomenal success of Squid Game. Wow, guys, just to remind you, Squid Game 2 is coming out December 26th. We we are not paid to plug that but uh squid game season one obviously the phenomenon made almost a billion dollars for netflix causing netflix to say hey you know what we're gonna invest 2.6 billion dollars over the next 10 years in korean content let's go right and then they came with the uh, physical 100 which wasn't bad a lot of people Another watched hit. that so that but but basically since then andrew i guess off that peak, it's only been a slow decline. And for example, in South Korea, the amount of Netflix user base went from 13 million all the way down to 11 million in June. Extrapolate the trend lines, Andrew. Not only that, Andrew, globally, and as well as within America, Netflix's market share of digital streaming content services is going down year after year. You mean Amazon Prime videos coming up? Hey, you thought you'd never see it happen, huh? Yeah, well, I just, you know, Simu and Aquafina got that new movie with John Cena, Jackpot. I just watched it. Anyways, guys, so we're going to talk about why the Korean content that Netflix invested so much into is not really hitting the goals and of what they thought, you know? And that's not to say that there's not some good shows. We're going to talk about them, but uh, I guess... They're underperforming. It's underperforming. It's not meeting the expectations. Are you saying that every show wasn't going to be like Squid Game and give us 100x ROI? I'm shocked. God, I thought just uh, once the Koreans hit, I just thought everybody wanted to watch Korean content forever. Yeah, I mean, let's just take a look at some of the posts I, that I got from the Netflix subreddit. Somebody said, why does Netflix keep funding a bunch of average Korean shows yet let Kingdom go? Why is Netflix's market share in constant decline? Netflix is going down, et cetera, et cetera. We are going to go into the comments section. We got you, uh, seven points for you guys today. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. Number one, Andrew. Andrew. People are saying Squid Games' uh, amazing success was a perfect storm of factors, and it set the bar way too high, possibly setting people's business projections and expectations too high. Yeah, you know, uh, there's plenty of comments pointing out that, you know, the success of Squid Games came at a perfect time. It was coming right out of COVID. Um, it was a very dark-themed thing. It was something that a lot of people hadn't seen before. It's actually a lot of people's first time being exposed to Korean thriller content. So, of course, people are locked in and by the way a lot of people watch squid games dubbed in english and other languages not necessarily in korean so i think the success of it just set the bar way too high it was just too high you're saying it had a perfect storm of everything and you can't recreate the perfect storm every time no i mean i don't know if there's any gonna be any single streaming series on a streaming platform that is going to make that much money for that streaming platform again maybe right 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 because game of thrones is really popular but game of thrones also costs hbo an incredible amount of money yeah. to produce so basically squid games it didn't cost that much money to produce and it made so much money so then all the executives and everybody got excited and was like oh my gosh well you know if the koreans are giving us a good deal they're producing good content for a low cost and it's making money Boom, boom, boom. Billions, billions, billions. Right. I mean, I saw some people compare it to uh, when Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks made the Eastern Conference Finals. And somebody said, th this is not my words, Koreans' Linsanity run is over. Dang. I mean, I, first of all, we're going to get into it. I think there's still plenty of good Korean content out there. But I think the expectations were way too high. Right, right, right. Uh, point number two, they're trying to appeal to people who watch K-dramas and Western people at the same time. Yeah, so this is an interesting point. I guess, David, are these comments and is this criticism saying that trying to appeal to a crowd that specifically likes K-dramas, that's a certain type of crowd, people with certain tastes. Almost like anime watchers. Right. Uh, they like that, and it's hard to capture like a, let's just say, an American male for example, to also watch it. Right, and also the structures of the seasons and the length of each episode is different from American episodic content or what we view as like Western episodic content. So you're trying to find this middle point, but then you may not end up fully satisfying either crowd. Mm. Point number three, why did somebody, this, this is a good question, and I'm 
by the way, guys, the Korean content is good, but why do you think the executives thought that Americans or Western people would want to consume that much Korean content, considering mo even though it's very trendy amongst the youth and really like Gen Z, most people will never even go to Korea once in their life. You know what I mean? So why would they watch a bunch of shows emanating from the society that they'll essentially never be a part of or never be exposed to in IRL? Yeah, I think that what I think happened is that when, you know, Korean content first gets introduced to you, right? Maybe it's during Squid Games and you're like, wow, this is really interesting. Are all Korean shows this good? Is every Korean show such a thriller? And then you watch a few more, which a lot of people did, right? And, but maybe because there's so much content from everybody else, it's not like you watch that same amount of Korean content. Like, let's say for a year, everybody's Korean content percentage consumption went up. So like, let's say I'm like an American white guy and I watch Squid Games and then I watch like two more series. So that means like 10% of my consumption was dedicated to Koreans that year. Does that mean that my next year I'm gonna watch 15%? of my content is gonna be Korean, right. and then it just keeps going up and up? No, it doesn't. In fact, I think there was a surge, and then there's actually a drop off, because people are like, well, this isn't really a culture I actually relate to, and like, maybe, you know, not all these series are good, so I'm just gonna go back to watching all this other content. It reminds me a little bit of 88 Rising. 88 Rising, you know, with Rich Brian and stuff like that, then they had uh, Midsummer Madness and stuff like that, but uh, there's a lot of things, Lonely Island, Little Dicky, I'm not, obviously Korean content is a whole sphere of content, but I'm just saying there's a lot of things that a lot of people think are like really hot for the moment, but that hot moment is not guaranteed to carry on forever. Yeah, I mean, it's just like anything, guys. You have to understand during Squid Games, the market for Korean content expanded, but it contracted. And now still the people who love Korean stuff and Asians alike and people who also like K-pop are still watching Korean dramas, oh no, they're definitely on it. But I'm just saying it expanded very fast and it contracts and, and, a little bit. But listen, maybe it's still bigger than it was. And listen, guys, there's always trends like this. I believe in New York City, uh, the volume of Smash Burger chains will contract. Because at some point, it's just like, what? Was everything going to be a Smash Burger? Yeah. I mean, listen, because of the Korean dramas, I'll probably take a look at any series that has, you know, Park So Joon as a main character. Or, uh, But I will say this. I watched a series called... Uh, Gyeong Sung Creature, right? And that was a good series. But then I'm on Netflix cruising and then I see what looks to be four other series about a similar storyline where parasites are taking over Korean people's bodies and then making them monsters. And I was just like, I don't know if I need to watch another monster movie. Yeah. Point number four though, uh, there's still some good stuff. Yes. A lot of people are talking about Glory, Same All of Us Dead. Um, there's other ones, for example, like Kingdom and, you know, uh, Mask Girl, Parasite, The mm, Grey. Definitely. I want to check out Kingdom next. Um, and yes, there is still good stuff, but you have to understand everybody's making so much content. It can't all be fire. It just can't be. Right, right. And there's actually a lot of uh, just ethnic content from like every single group right now. Yeah, right? dude, I see more african theme series you know with african actors whether they're filmed or take place in africa or whatever but i see more like french there's more asian stuff there's still a lot of american stuff you know so there's just an insane amount of content right now right point number five andrew this is a good segue somebody said all content kind of sucks right now and basically tiktok is kicking everybody's ass Dang. um do you think that that's true that just all content on all digital streaming as digital streaming has sort of replaced tv series and andrew some people argue that it's killing movie theaters like as well you know yeah. like big box office releases i really agree with this comment right now um someone said netflix is all about quantity over quality and that's why everything is getting canceled after the first season renegotiating for contracts and subsequent seasons is much more expensive for successful shows blah, blah 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 exactly i mean there's a lot of reasons why netflix doesn't renew shows if it shows that by the end of the series there was no new memberships um because netflix cares about memberships then they'll cancel even good shows right so that's the content game though, man. Hey, Netflix, I've been in YouTube for a decade now. I know what the content game is like. You can have a hit video. You can have a hit series. You can have a hit movie. Guess what? You got to make more content. 
Yep. Somebody said the reason is because they're dropping off all the good shows and continuing trash and garbage. People are leaving because of that. U.S. shows have gone down the deep end. Not sure about K-dramas. Those are still good quality, but at the end of the day, Westerners are not staying for that. Bro, let me tell you this, man. I cruise through Netflix. A lot of that Netflix original stuff, it's not good. Even the American stuff, I'm talking about all the stuff that I click on. It's a lot of the original Netflix stuff is not good. And you know, the funny thing is, as much as you're criticizing Netflix for having some mediocre quality, people still say that Netflix is still overall the best. Right, right, right. Point number six, people are mad potentially at the political narrative on Netflix. Uh. So let's just take a look at this comment. Somebody said, ain't nobody want woke flicks anymore. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you think that this, this could play into it? Like people are like just, you know, wanting more right-wing content or moderate content and they feel like Netflix is more on the left? I think that there is a lack of content that appeals to that crowd. And obviously now there are other platforms uh, that have more of that content, but maybe don't have the funding. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. There's a crazy idea. What if Netflix started a more, uh, you know, conservative right-wing content arm? You mean where it's just Mark Wahlberg series? Yeah, and like, you know, <laughs> Christian series and like, you know, uh, that'd be interesting. I don't think it'd be smart for Netflix to do that, but I'm just saying that would be interesting if they started more of a, uh, you know, right-wing content arm. <laughs> right. Point number seven, somebody just said, the world is kind of going crazy right now and real life is more exciting than any single piece of fake fiction content could possibly be. So that's why also people's attention, people's attention is more, ha uh, I guess, on the crazy happenings around the globe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll tell you this, a lot of uh, eyes are glued in on the election and that's getting a lot of eyeballs right now talking about it. Obviously, that's going to take eyeballs away from content and netflix a little fiction. bit because netflix is fiction yeah uh, or documentaries but basically it's not like current events you know so um i don't know you know this whole streaming thing david i don't know sometimes i kind of just feel like there's just so much content how much more content can there be like how yeah. much more content can there be man Th there was a comment that said people don't understand People think that user-created content like TikTok isn't in competition, but at the end of the day, everything is sharing the same screens on the phone or the TV because sometimes people watch TikToks on their TV now. So it actually is competing, even being dis uh, despite it being such drastically different styles of content or production values. I agree, guys. Listen, anything that takes up eyeball time on a screen is competing move with each other but, david, but, david, but no. look at how crummy the tiktoks no. are we hot pot boys got to compete with tiktokers and netflix and amazon prime bro because you're only going to consume so much during your crunchy day, right? roll and then we got to compete with k dramas and c dramas and we're cut we david could compete with all that all right. so thank you for watching <laughs> our videos those who choose to give us your eyeballs thank you i hope that we don't fail you. All right, so let's answer the question. Did the $2.5 billion investment in Korean content flop? Obviously, it is way too early to say. Yeah, first it's of all, way too early to they, say because that money has not been deployed yet. They got uh, Squid Game Season 2. They could, you know, it, it could work out, right? Yeah. But they got to make some adjustments. Right. Um. Ultimately, yeah, like we said, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, where What is the future of streaming? What is the future of Netflix? And where do you think Korean, Japanese, Chinese... I know there's a ton of Indian movies popping up on Netflix right now. Where does all this international content fit into this, fit into the future? All right. Let us know in the comments down below. Also, let me know any other good, good Korean series that I got to watch. What, what, what's the one that you like? You, what's one you want to see another season of? Because I know you watch a lot. Uh, Nation of Kimchi? Hey, man. I love Nation of Kimchi. Kimchi nada. I love that one. So more of that, guys. All right. Thank you so much. Let us know. Hit that like button. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.